What's up guys? Today we're taking you back to the basics. I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak in my opinion. This is a two and a half inch rib steak and it's been tempering for almost half an hour now because the goal is to bring your steak to room temperature before you cook it. Very simple. We'll do it kind of like my usual style. We have some butter for basting with some fresh thyme, some garlic. We have some salt and pepper, olive oil. And that's pretty much it. The rest is all about technique. First step, we're gonna get this cast iron pan nice and hot. I'm using the Matheson cookware today. What I really like about this pan is a lip in the front here for basting. You can kind of tilt your pan and you have more room for basting. Okay, so while this is gonna go, we are going to season the steak. Now there's like two different schools of thoughts here. Some people do only salt because they say that pepper is gonna burn and become bitter. I kind of agree, I add the pepper at the end, but sometime I'll do it for like, I don't know, like chicken where it's like not gonna be, I guess, searing for that long or not as hard. So for me, steak, just salt and then pepper at the end. So we'll start. And you know what, like I always kind of switch it up. Sometimes I add some olive oil to start with, sometimes I don't. Today I'm gonna put just salt on the steak and olive oil in the pan. And a big steak like this, you wanna season this thing very, very heavily and generously. Also, don't forget that all the salt you're gonna put on that steak, probably half of it or more is gonna end up at the bottom of this pan. So, you know, just go generously, rub that in, take your time, massage it. Also, forgot to mention, this steak has been on a drying rack in the fridge for not even 24 hours. The goal here is just to get some moisture out of your steak to get more enhanced beef flavor and also ultimately extract uh, extra moisture from your steak to have that beautiful Maillard reaction, that brown delicious crust that's gonna give your steak the best flavor in the world. For me, the rib steak is like my all time go-to because first of all, you can have a big, a big piece like that that you can kind of like develop some nice crust, have some nice fat marbling, lots of flavor, you have the bone in and everyone likes to chew on that bone. Um, so for me, that's like always the number one choice for sure. Our pan should be nice and hot now. So I'm gonna start with a bit of olive oil. You know, it's already fat as it is, but just a little starter. So that thing's gonna stick. And now some purists will say, don't put olive oil, you should put some canola or like neutral oil. Fuck off, olive oil is delicious. And when you have a very high quality olive oil, the smoke uh, point is actually higher than some canola oils. So you know what? It's a matter of controlling your, your fire here. So we're gonna start with a beautiful sear. All right, so. See, it's starting to smoke. We're gonna add this steak in, always against you. Perfect. And then you can put this on like uh, medium high. The goal is like to, it's such a big steak, you wanna take the time to develop that crust. So if you go too fast, you get, you're gonna get a nice sear, but you won't develop that beautiful Maillard brown crust reaction that we want. Also, the question I get a lot is where should I buy my steaks or my meat? You know, for me, obviously, I always recommend going to see your butcher. Not only you get the best quality of meat, usually, you also can develop this relationship with your butcher and you get there and if he likes you, you might get some, you know, some behind the counter kind of stuff. Enough chit chat, I think it's time to flip our steak here. Check it out. Oh, mamma mia. Check out this crust. Now that's called a Maillard reaction. Who's Maillard? I don't even know, he's a Frenchman who figured out one day that crust equals flavor. Flavor equals happiness. Happiness equals everything. Another big question, you know, because we did our research, guys. We looked it up. Most frequently asked questions about cooking a steak. Um, the doneness is, to me, obviously very personal. Uh, it's a matter of, you know, preference. I'm more of a medium rare kind of person. If you go like to places like uh, like in France or Italy, everyone's like eating that shit fucking senya. You know that raw, that blur sometimes. It's a bit gnarly, I like it too, but like for me, uh, I feel like if you have friends over, you wanna make sure everyone's happy. Uh, medium rare is probably the way to go. Unless you have this loser friend who wants his steak overcooked. Just don't invite this guy, you know, no one likes him anyways. But I would say medium rare in most cases is the way to go. Okay, time to flip it again. Oh my God, this is even better than the other side. Look at this. Oh my God. Okay, now what I wanna do 
is put this big boy on the fat cap like this to render out some fat and get that nice and crispy. So leave that to render a little bit. And while that's going, another question you may ask is, Laurent, where should I cook my steak? Should I use my cast iron pan? Should I use my stainless steel pan? Should I use the barbecue, gas, charcoal, the pizza oven? There's too many options, you know? It's kind of confusing at this point. I would say they all work. It's just a matter of technique at this point and preference. For me, I would say the best would be charcoal barbecue uh, on a wood fire because you get that extra smoky flavor. Yeah, for me, it's just nice to be, you know, outside, work with fire. It's kind of this primal thing I really enjoy to kind of just be out there. You have to like kind of make sure it's always hot enough that if you have a nice coal going. I don't know, I feel like pan's always a sure shot because you have that nice even crust. Obviously, you have more control on the fire. It's just like, you know, Low, high, low, high, on, oh, on, on, off. So you can definitely be more in control of what's going on here with your steak. And for me, cast iron is probably the way, for a big steak like this at least, cast iron pan will hold its heat way more than a stainless steel pan. With a big steak like this, I would definitely suggest cast iron pan because you can have a nice even uh, heat throughout the whole cooking process. All right, let's flip this steak, see what's going on here. Oh my God, look at this fat cap, beautiful. I really want to sear it on all sides, you know? In a steak this size, you can take the time to really sear every single surface of it without worrying about overcooking it, you know? You, we might even finish it in the oven, we might not, we'll see, because we still have to base this thing with butter. Also, if like me, you live in Canada, uh, going outside for grilling at minus 40 is not the best, so I feel like pans may be like the, the best universal option for First steak. Our steak is now seared on all surfaces. It's been probably in there for like 10 minutes almost. And now we're gonna take it out for a sec on this resting tray. And I wanna do a quick clean to this pan because there's, as you can see, all the all the burnt salt at the bottom. I mean, if I were to make a sauce in there afterward, I'd probably just to kind of like get most of the salt and the oil out of there and then use it. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of do a thorough rinse of this pan and we can get to the basting part. So the good thing about this cast iron pan, I just rinsed it with cold water and it's still piping hot, you know? So no time, no need to wait till it gets back to uh, temperature. We're good to go. We're gonna get it back on. I'm gonna add some butter in there and I'm gonna be very generous because it's a big boy steak. I'm gonna do this much, this much, there you go. I might even add more than that, so, you know? Don't freak out, guys. Not that all the butter is gonna be inside the steak, it's just for basting. So don't worry, you're not gonna be eating all this butter. Now what I wanna do is just cut this garlic in half. I'm gonna go with a full garlic head, or even maybe just half of it, see? Here, all of this in there. Get to know the butter here. You can become friends in the pan. Oh, it's already smelling so good. And also I'm gonna add a bunch of thyme in here, this much. You can even hear it fry, listen. That is the sound of thyme frying in butter, guys. It's time to add the steak back in the party. And now it's time to baste. You wanna tilt the pan back towards you like this to have all the butter in here. I'm gonna show, you, show it to you guys with this angle so you can see better. And now you just wanna baste and base and see how that butter is like beautiful and white and bubbly that's exactly how you want it if it gets too brown add some more butter and the time on top like this nothing's in the way during basting and put that on top like this and then you can base nothing in the way and then all that butter like falling on that garlic is gonna go right in the steak look at this look at this and that's gonna make sure your steak stays nice and moist, and it's also gonna give a nice flavor of butter to your steak, which you know what, everyone enjoys. And that's good, at some point, you wanna go for a flip, so you don't like overcook one side of your steak. So we're gonna flip that up, a little flip a -roo. then we're gonna put this back on top, and add some more butter as well, because it's becoming a little brown in there. A little more, a little more. 
And here you go, you keep going, you baste, you baste, you baste. It's all going in the crevasses like this. And you know what guys? I think it's safe to say that all, after all my years of heavy basting, I've become a master baster. Guys, if you could only be here to smell what's going on, it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, now it's time to pull out this bad boy. We're gonna put it on the same resting tray here. Oh my God, that's heavy. Beautiful, and we're gonna let that on top, and now we're gonna even pour all this delicious butter right on top. Oh my God. Oh, yes. Now the biggest question of all, how to know the doneness of your steak. There's many ways to do it. Obviously before uh, we had access to gadgets such as the meter, which by the way is great. Uh, you can just stick it in your meat, uh, link it up with your phone, sync it up with your phone and then just uh, have uh, estimate time of cooking according to the doneness that you already preset. You can, you know, put your thing in the oven, go for a little nap, go for a little, you know, clean up at the house, have a coffee, and when it's done, an alarm on your phone, it's ready, good to go. But before that, uh, what I learned in cooking school was a very good trick actually, I'm gonna show you guys right now, is uh, all you need is your hand, pretty much, and your fingers, even better if you have some. Because this is where you're gonna gauge the doneness of your steak. So, so this technically would be like, a, like blue, see here, when you press, super soft. Now what happens when you connect your index and your thumb like this, now it's rare. Medium well? Fucking horseshit. <laughs> well done. If you get to this point, you should just put your steak in the garbage, guys, okay? Blur, rare, medium rare, medium well, garbage. Got it? So let's see here. It's bouncy, it comes back. So this is kind of like probably on the rare side. This here looks like a medium. Let's see if I'm right. I might be wrong, you know? Sometimes it's hard to tell with those big, big boy steak like that. So what we're gonna do is plug in our meter in there in the middle like that. I would say the only thing I don't like about the meter, sorry meter, or any any, any brand, doesn't matter, is um, when you start cutting your steak, all you can see is this fucking hole, like a worm's been through your meat. I don't like that visually, but you know, it, it is precise. So let's see here. So now we have internal 126, which would be, oh, it's still climbing up. See one, now we're at 135. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty fucking accurate, guys. You've done all this work, you gave all your love and attention to the steak, lots of butter, lots of garlic, lots of herbs, you know, took time to sear all surfaces, and now it's resting, and that's almost as important as the whole cooking process. Some people say uh, the resting time should be equal as the cooking time. So uh, let's say it's been cooking for like, what, 50 minutes total? I think 50 minutes rest, and people are always like, oh, is it gonna be cold, is it gonna be cold? No, it's still, it's still gonna be warm and delicious. Okay, our steak has been resting for 15, 20 minutes. We went for a little cigarette, a little chit chat, took some calls, opened up some packages, and now it's time to cut it. What I'm gonna do here is, I always go around the bone like this. Perfect. Oh my God, see? You already know it's gonna be really fucking perfect. It's that beautiful pink by the bone. Cut it like this. Oh my God, it's nice and juicy. Look at this. Look at this, guys. See this? Perfectly cooked. See what I'm talking about here? That's the, the meter for you, okay? Oh my God, yeah, look at this. See, guys? This is perfection. To me, that's how you should always cook your rib steak. I always plate these the same, kind of like line up like this on my cutting board and then scoop it right on the plate like this. And then let it slide. And you always keep the bone on the side for presentation. And now you would be a fool to put this in the garbage. What we're gonna do is just drop this amazing juice in our tray. This. So what we have in this tray here is butter from the basting and the resting juices. So if you do this, the magic will happen right in front of your eyes. See, we are making an emulsion right 
in our pan. You see this? It's becoming one. That's flavor, baby. Put this on the burner for one sec. See what's going on right now, guys? And since we didn't add any pepper to our steak, now it's time. Add some pepper in there. That's a sauce. No need to uh, go crazy, guys. That's just butter and resting liquids. And now we're gonna do is pour that right on top of our steak. Oh. A perfectly cooked rib steak. Finally, you guys, the best part of the video. Tasting time. All right, let's go with the middle piece here. I think it's gonna be the best. Just check the color of this beautiful piece of steak. Still the fiber is breaking down. There you go, the perfect steak bite. <laughs> and that's it guys that's how you cook the perfect steak i hope you enjoyed that video we're gonna do more of these uh, videos on basics let us know which one you'd like me to do next time and don't forget to go subscribe leave a comment like the video hit that bell all that stuff we love you and on that note peace